welcome to another installment of AA Computers and Technology. Today we're going to be taking a look at this Nobilis desktop computer. Usually I'll start out my video with telling you guys the model of the computer as well, such as this is the Nobilis DX2005 uh, or something of that nature, but um, this is sort of embarrassing, but I don't actually know the model name or number of this computer because it's not labeled anywhere on the case. And I did a Google search of the serial number and absolutely nothing came up. Um, so it's a little weird that uh, this computer can't really be found anywhere. And even the brand Nobilis I've never heard of before until I actually received this desktop computer. I mean you've heard of you know Dell, HP, Lenovo, even uh, older brands such as Tandy, Sinclair, um, we all know Apple. But then you get to a brand like Nobilis and you're kind of just like, huh? I've never heard of that before. And uh, I don't know if any of you guys have. If you know anything about um, the Nobilis line of computers or the Nobilis brand of computers, um, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section because I did some light research and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, but I couldn't dig up too much on it. Now this computer wasn't actually a garage sale find. This was something one of my relatives gave to me and it appears he bought it from a reseller called East Coast Technology Service Corporation. Now I did a quick Google search on this uh, reseller and I couldn't actually find anything. So I'm sure by now they're probably out of business. I mean this desktop computer is 10 years old and with the economy how it is I'm sure they're long gone. So let me tell you a little bit about that research that I did. It appears that the Nobilis line of computers is a division of a larger company called Equus Computer Systems. Um, the Nobilis line is their line of desktop computers and they make a couple different systems. Um, they have uh, desktop computers, they make some servers along with some laptops and I couldn't really find them for sale anywhere. There were some pictures on the website and of course I will post those pictures up in the video when I get the chance. Um, but that's really all I could dig up. We can have a broader discussion in the comments section, but let's go ahead and get on with this overview of the Nobilis desktop computer. So for the past year, I've been using this desktop computer as my school computer. It's currently running Xubuntu 14.04. Um, it's equipped with a Pentium 4 running at 2.6 gigahertz. We have two gigabytes of DDR333 RAM. And of course, I'm going to move the system over and give you guys a nice look inside of it um, once this video progresses. Along with that, we have a NVIDIA G4 6200 paired with 256 megabytes of video memory. And then uh, everything else I will get to when we take a look inside the case. On the front of the computer, you can see we have a DVD drive, a CD drive, a 2.5 inch floppy disk drive right here. There's the Nobilis logo. We have a power button, two indicator lights, and a reset button as well. And then below that, you can see the two USB 2.0 ports. And as I lower the camera, there is a intake vent for the front facing fan and then there's our good old Pentium 4 logo. Now as we move over to the right side of the computer you can see there's nothing much there. There's a small handle and that's really about it. On the top, same story, there is the uh, East Coast Technology um, Service Corporation sticker and that's about it. As we move to the back you can see all of the various interfaces, um, you can see the output for a video card, um, the output for an ethernet card. Right here you can also see we have a phone modem installed. As we move up we can see more of our interfaces. We have multiple audio jacks. Um, there are two USB ports on the bottom and two at the top right there. There is a ethernet port, parallel port for printing. We have VGA, serial, um, and then two PS2 ports, one for the keyboard and one for the mouse. And then you can see our 300 watt power supply right here with the nice clunky on and off switch. And then you can see the air outtake vent for the uh, rear of the computer. Let's go ahead and take a look at all of the goodies inside. Right here you can see the heatsink for the Pentium 4 processor. There's the heatsink for the North Bridge. There is our video cord which is a G4 6200 with 256 megabytes of video memory. And you can see I uh, strapped a, a somewhat large Vantec fan onto the heatsink because it was just getting way too hot. Um, there is our phone modem. You can see there are one, two, three, four, five, six PCI ports. 
or a PCI slot along with a AGP slot for the video card. Um, as we move over to the right, you can see the solid state drive with Xubuntu 14.04 installed on this. This is a KingSpec 16 gigabyte solid state drive. Here is our 320 gigabyte uh, hard drive rotating at 7,200 RPM. This is where I store all of my files and backups. As we move up again, you can see the two gigabytes of RAM under here. Actually, let me go ahead and move all these cables. Now you can get a better view of the RAM. There are four sticks totaling to two gigabytes of DDR333 RAM. Um, this is actually overclocked to 400 megahertz. Up here, you can see the Sparkle power supply rated for 250 watts. I think I said earlier it was a 300 watt power supply. Sorry about that. It is actually a 250 watt power supply. Um, as we move down again, I missed something. You can see the CMOS battery down there next to the uh, video card fan. And I believe I got everything. One more thing I want to mention is that when I received this computer, there was actually one bad capacitor on the motherboard, um, but it hasn't caused me any trouble yet, so I'm not going to try to fix it. Um, so yeah, so far, this computer has been running great. Of course I did forget something. The You can see the CD, or that's the CD drive, and this is the DVD drive right here connected to the IDE cable. And then down here, right there, all the way in the back, you can see the back of the floppy drive. If anyone's really curious about my cooling configuration, I have a push-pull configuration. The front fan pushes air into the case, and then the rear fan pulls the air out. Next, I'm going to throw everything back together and show you guys what the system can do. My video card supports two monitors, so uh, when I'm using the computer I do use two monitors, but during this little overview I'm only going to be showing one monitor uh, because it just makes things a lot easier. Um, but before we get started, I'm going to go into the BIOS and verify that we did get all of these system specifications right, and then we can go ahead and boot into Xubuntu 14.04. And as usual, we're not going to be using some sort of screen recorder because it just uses too much resources and I really don't want to slow this computer down. I want to demonstrate it to its full potential, um, so I'm just going to be recording the screen with the camera. So we are powering it on now. I'm going to turn the monitors on. And go into the BIOS. All right, so let's go over th over everything. Um, we have a Pentium 4 running at 2.6 gigahertz with hyper-threading. I forgot to mention the hyper-threading earlier. Uh, we have two gigabytes of DDR333 memory overclocked to 400 megahertz. Um, and that's really all this page is going to display. We already verified that there's a, a GeForce 6200 and we looked at all the drives and stuff when we opened up the computer itself. So let's go ahead and exit discarding changes and boot this thing up. And with this little King Spec solid state drive, boot times are pretty fast on this computer. My login screen actually pops up on that monitor. So I'm going to log in to the desktop. And then we can start running some programs. Since this is my school computer, and I am a student, the two programs I use the most are Chromium for web browsing and LibreOffice for word processing. 
So let's go ahead and test both of those programs out. You can see Chromium on the bottom left. I'm going to go ahead and click the icon. And it comes up relatively fast. Firefox actually comes up a lot faster. Um, let's go ahead and why don't we try to watch a YouTube video using this computer. Flash Player is actually really poor for Linux, um, so we can only watch the video in standard definition. If I were running something like uh, Windows XP, per se, um, I believe the 6200 in this would be able to play back a video in either 720 or 180p. you ask? Well, my computer upstairs, which is my main computer with a Core i7 and a GTX 660 M is currently rendering an animation, which means I can't open a second instance of... See, I hate this about YouTube. It too slow. Um, so, sometimes it switches the video to um, high definition. I can't install and Blender I'm going to switch it back. There we go. Machine and use it to do some design and animation. So, so let's get started. And this was my last video of a Blender running on a Pentium 4 processor. Here are those system specifications I promised you earlier. Um, we have a Intel Pentium 4 running at 2.6 gigahertz. We have Let's just skip ahead. Alright, um, I'm going to add one more object and then we'll see how long it takes to render. Um, how about a cone? Ta-da! And yeah, so the uh, solid view is still nice and smooth. So full screen, um, standard definition video playback works pretty well. You saw there were a couple jumps in there, um, but for the most part, video playback is relatively smooth. Since this is my school computer and I am a student, the two programs I use the most are Chromium for word browsing and LibreOffice for word processing. So let's go ahead and test both of those programs out. You can see Chromium on the bottom left. I'm going to go ahead and click the icon. And it comes up relatively fast. Firefox actually comes up a lot faster. Um, let's go ahead and why don't we try to watch a YouTube video using this computer. Flash Player is actually really poor for Linux. Um, so we can only watch the video in standard definition. If I were running something like uh, Windows XP per se, um, I believe the 6200 in this would be able to play back a video in either 720 or 180p. and use it to do some design and animation. So, so let's get started. And this was my last video of uh, Blender running on a Pentium 4 processor. Here are those system specifications I promised you earlier. Um, we have a Intel Pentium 4 running at 2.6 gigahertz. We have let's just skip ahead. Alright, um, I'm gonna add one more object and then we'll see how long it takes to render. Um, how about a cone? Ta-da! And yeah, so the uh, solid view is still nice and smooth. So full screen, um, standard definition video playback works pretty well. You saw there were a couple jumps in there, um, but for the most part, video playback is relatively smooth. So the Chromium web browser works just fine on this computer. Let's go ahead and open up LibreOffice. Office and then LibreOffice Writer is the program that I use the most. And that always confuses me. <laughs> so it is up on this screen, as you can see. Um, letters type out nice and smooth. You know, we can highlight, use all the functions, yada yada yada. Um, LibreOffice Writer works fine. 
The other day I was also using Blender on this computer. So let me go ahead and demonstrate that working. This is a uh, 3D modeling and animation software. And as you can see, it works just fine. The 3D workspace is nice and smooth. I did a whole video about this, um, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on Blender. Additionally, this computer is also capable of some light gaming. Um, I have a uh, Super Tux Cart installed. And I'm not sure which monitor it comes up on. All right, this one. And I can demonstrate that. Alright, so that's enough of that. Why don't we go ahead and try to run uh, Halo. Halo sounds fun. Cortana, all I need to know is did we lose them? I think we both know the answer to that. Tube shows green. Cycle complete. Sorry for the quick thaw, Master Chief. Things are a little hectic right now. But this orientation should pass quickly. Welcome back, sir. We'll have you battle ready stat. Chief, please look around the room. I need to get a calibration reading for your battlesuit's diagnostics. Good. Thank you, sir. I'm bringing your health monitors online, sir. Vital signs look normal. No freezer burn. Okay, sir. Go ahead and climb out of the cryo tube. I gave you a double dose of the wake-up stim. Take a quick walk around the cryo bay and join me at the optical diagnostic station when you're ready. Alright, so this is just the intro to Halo. Um, as you can see, gameplay so far is pretty smooth. Um, I think we're getting the 30 frames per second that we should be getting. It's actually performing uh, very nice. Okay, sir, look at me so we can begin. Alright, so that's it for that. Let's go ahead and move on to something else. And then just real quick, a couple other programs I do use are GIMP. A 
the clips. and Adobe Dreamweaver for some HTML editing. So at this point, I believe I've covered everything. We took a look around the computer, we took a look inside the computer, and we saw what the computer is capable of doing, which is quite a bit. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post a comment in the comment section. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel, and please do not forget to like this video. And of course, I look forward to the discussion about the Nobilis line of computers in the comment section. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys next video.